Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Right, morning folks. Good morning. Uh, I've got my uh, bag packed away um, and I've just got to take the tent down now. I can't remember the uh, name of the place I'm going to now. It's got um, a little shop. Apparently sounds really nice pasties. I can't remember. I, but as I said, I've walked along this coast path a few times this bit. Um, but it's got um, a bit where you go through the rocks, there's like a little tunnel through the rocks. Um, it begins with PO or something like that, I can't remember. I'll put the name up on the screen for you guys. I forgot how uh, dramatic the uh, landscape is around here. Um, it really is stunning. Um, I realised now why there were so many people at Land's End uh, yesterday. Uh, apparently it's like uh, holidays uh, for some people. It's nearly um, Halloween, so I guess it's the Halloween holidays coming up. So yeah, it's quite busy at the moment. This is early in the morning they so say. There's no one about at the moment. I'm seriously loving the landscape though. Seriously. Oh, I can see... Um, a Coast Guard lookout coming up. It's part of the National uh, Coast Guard scheme, I think. Um, yeah. But seriously, I'm going to start making the bag lighter. Um, as you like, um, when you get older, when you're younger, you think you're indestructible. Um, but yeah. All the all the long distance hiking, running, exercise has actually damaged my feet. So yeah, you can actually say that um, exercise is actually bad for you. <laughs> it's not good for you. It, okay, exercise in moderation probably is good for you, but extreme exercise is actually it's actually really bad for you. <laughs> but it's good fun. It's addictive that's the problem like anything you like you you can get really into it um, like I am like I, I love running I, I can't do without my running it's like a high you get high from it after a run so yeah so I'm gonna make my bag lighter um, I think um, I can take less clothing the clothing I've, I've took shit loads of clothing with me as well Lots of food. I think the food is vital though, because you can run out of food. But um, I carried lots of food, water. But the clothing I took too much, definitely for this time of year. Even in the winter camps, I think I can take less clothing. I just take my down jacket and thermal or whatever. And I think I use a different cushion system. In the past, I've been using um, my clothes as a cushion. But thinking about it, those clothes weigh quite a bit. I always think, oh, if I don't use them, I can use them as a cushion anyway, but half the time I really don't use them, and um, I haven't this time. So I think I'm going to have a, like, a blow-up cushion or something like that. This is bringing back so many memories of walking the southwest coast path. I didn't actually walk that all in one go, I did it in about uh, four, four go, like four pieces. Um, it's a thousand kilometres, well when I did it, it was a thousand kilometres long, it might have made it longer, but I know it's going to join part of the English coast path now, the England coast path. Um, but I could, I could have definitely done it in one go, but at the time I just didn't have the, the time or finances to do that. Um, I didn't do any videoing of it, I took loads of pictures though, which I still haven't put up on stock photography, like I've got so many uh, ventures to put up on my stock photography. Um, I've put some of the pictures up on a uh, Flickr, I think. Some of them are up on there. But 
yeah I really want to what I need to do really is sort out the best pictures and put those up but then with stock photography I've sold pictures that are really not like grainy like grainy pictures dark and you wouldn't think they would sell and they've sold um sold one recently for about I think it was $24 like it's a really grainy dark picture That brought back a few memories. That's a lovely little place down there. Um, there's a little shop. Uh, it's the end of October and it opens at nine in the morning. How cool is that? Um, I don't know if it's like that all year round. Probably not. I don't know. It might be. But it's a lovely little shop in it. It sells basically pa pastas. It's definitely recommended. Just had the vegetable and steak pasty really nice really beautiful about three pounds 75 each i think they were um very recommended so i've not done as much droning on this week as much as i'd like to i think i might have said already the um there's a lot of restricted zones because there's an aerodrome nearby, so you obviously can't fly there. And the wind and the weather and uh, yeah, and um, not really done much talking in the videos. Um, so why really? I think obviously because of the wind, I can't. There's no point talking when it's windy. I really need to get like a, a wind shield. The GoPro, I think they're pretty cheap. Originally didn't get one because I was using um, a gimbal and you couldn't really put it on the GoPro when you're using the gimbal. But to be honest, when I'm hiking, I don't bother using the gimbal anymore. I found that when I take it with me, I very rarely use it. And of course, if I'm using the gimbal, I can't use this selfie stick. And it's a pain in the ass taking the camera off the selfie stick <coughs> then put it onto the gimbal the gimbal that i've got you have to there's these little screws and you have to keep it, it's a, like you have to stop start i mean it's enough work just with the drone stopping for do the drone stuff um <laughs> i sound like i don't enjoy this do i but i i'm re i really do enjoy it i enjoy all the bad weather all the hard work I really do enjoy it so I wouldn't do it I certainly wouldn't do it for like I don't make like I say do stock photography and um, stock video and put ads up, ads up on YouTube or whatever you know affiliate links but do you know how much I probably like be lucky to make a couple of quid in a month on uh, Amazon um, affiliate links and um, Stock photography, normally just about every photo you sell, especially on uh, Shutterstock, 25 cents per tap you get per download. 25 cents. Um, <laughs> so, like in a month on stock photography, probably you'd be extremely lucky, well, I would, to make 10 at the moment. 
probably ten dollars or something uh, sometimes you make more it depends because some pictures do very rarely sell for more uh, but um, yeah, most of the pictures sell for 25 cents each, so obviously not doing it for the money, am I? You're not, you're not going to pick it up on the GoPro probably, but I can hear in the distance what sounds like a whale. I've done for the last, like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'm heading now towards the Minac, Miniac, Minac Theatre. Famous theatre carved out of rock on the uh, cliff face and by the Minac Theatre is, a, I can never remember the name of the beach but I always call it Cable Beach because it's where all the old telegraph cables used to go out to around the uh, Commonwealth around the world um, under the sea like a couple of hundred years ago so it's pretty impressive uh, we'll be taking a look at that It's really sad to uh, someone lost their life along this coast, this bit of coast path uh, in a big storm and trying to save these uh, these birds, some uh, distressed birds on the, uh, I guess up here somewhere and I don't know how they died, I'm guessing they got blown off the uh, coast path or something but that was in, it said 2016, it's really sad, there's a little memorial I just showed you just shows you've got to be really careful walking these paths in the uh, storms. You back the memories. Um, remember that well back there? It's an uh, ancient uh, Christian well. Ah, <laughs> it's making me want to do the whole coast path again. But I keep changing my mind about walking around the whole of Britain because, from what I've seen, there's large areas of it that are really shit. <laughs> like large areas of shit but there are large areas that are really good as well but um oh, I keep changing my mind on it I'd love to pack light though definitely for that there's a lot of uh fishing boats out today actually I can't tell if this video is too dark or what might be a little bit on the dark side um check that view out man Sees a lovely colour around here as well, from what I remember. And look, that's one of those weathered uh, holes you get. It's not very, it's not perfectly round though, but it's still one of those like weathered holes from the weather that people sometimes think are man-made. Possibly man-made. Who knows? Who am I to say? It's just my opinion. I think they're weathered. This is interesting. Anti-drone sign. Landing. Launching, landing, or operating remote controlled aircraft is forbidden. This, this, because this bit of land is private property. I'm not sure if that's a law or it's a bylaw because the public use this area. It's a little picnic area. So I'm not sure how that works, but I will not, I will be adhering to the sign. I'm not going to launch it from here anyway. The famous Minac Theatre. Adults, five pounds. It would have been really cool to get some uh, drone footage of the Minac Theatre, but I'm getting the impression they don't like drones around there by that sign. Even if I am allowed to fly in a, from a public area here, it's a totally okay fly zone. But um, if I flew it from this path, it's a bit awkward. I'll lose signal probably and uh, from the beach it's going to be a bit far out and I can't see if there's a helicopter coming so obviously that's out of the question. 
It's a combination of the uh, good weather at the moment, apparently a local just said the weather's good for here at the moment. It is, it's warm and it's practically, it's the 22nd of October today and it is the holidays, that's why it's so busy. Still early in the morning, so I got here before the big rush, I guess. That's what I call Cable Beach, but that's not its proper name. As I said, it's, to, it's got the uh, cable terminus for the uh, cables going all around the old empire in empire days. Um, going all around the Commonwealth, I guess. And the, the cables would have gone right under that beach and under the sea to all over the world. So, so awkward with the big bag. It's not that bad. It's not that bad path. I'll try and find a way to get that one. It went out falling head first, which I have done in the past. I want to fall head first down there though. Well, I should say I nearly fell head first. Luckily, I just managed to save myself from falling flat on my face with the full weight of the bag on my back. I suspect there's already loads of uh, drone footage of the Mayanak Theatre anyway. Um, so my drone footage would bring nothing new to it. Um, it's not like an amazing sunrise or sunset at the moment, so... But if it, if it was, I would actually think about it and try and find somewhere safe to take the craft, craft off from and uh, get some footage. But as it is, it's really no point. It's, it's going to be... It's just not worth it. Okay. Actually, of all, all the beaches I've been to in Cornwall, I have to say, I rate this as one of the best. Even though it gets really busy here. Oh, in the summer it'd be packed out. But uh, if you can get air on a quiet day, the sea is so clear here. Um, there's something about this beach, and it's got a lot of history, obviously, as well, with the cables. And it's got the Mayanak Theatre, so obviously, I guess it's not going <laughs> to... It's a tourist hotspot. But I have been here. If you get here early in the mornings, um, it's reasonably quiet like it is now. It's such a nice day for late October. Okay, I'm going to walk down to the beach. There's only one person on there doing exercising. Well, they still have communication uh, cables going under the beach here. Yeah? So, unfortunately, my uh, Maverick Pro is not letting me um, fly in this area. It's uh, off limits zone according to that, but according to the official aviation app, was it Nats? I can fly here, it's out of a red zone, there's no problem flying here. But um, the Maverick won't let me fly here. Fantastic. Oh well. Yeah, I just double checked. According to the Nats app, I can fly here. It's out of the uh, aerodrome zone. Uh, so unless there's some other thing that the Nats app is not telling me, I don't see why I can't fly here. It's well away from the aerodrome and it's not in the red area. There's no, you know, according to that, I can fly here. But it seems like the Maverick is over, over um, cautious. It's like, but when I say overcautious, I mean seriously overcautious. So basically, there is a large area of um, Cornwall that is um, you can't fly. It's in the red zone because it's aerodrome. But if you have a Maverick Pro, the area is humongous where you can't fly. It seems um, really big area. I mean, it's the most of it. Seriously, is a big area. 
where you can't fly. It's a great shame because um, I think um, drone footage helps the tourist industry, advertising, you know, loads of people can make some money from it. Um, from what I've seen, it doesn't harm wildlife. I've never had any problem with like bird collisions. I know it happens, but I do not. I'm not going to fly my drone when there's a shitload of birds in the sky. I'm not going to do that. I've had the odd one fly close to my drone, but I've not um, purposely flown because there are birds in the air. I definitely wouldn't do that. We've just stopped at um, the Treen Junction on the coast path. Uh, Treen is just up there. Uh, the last time I was here, um, I walked the coast path from here to John Lay Groats with uh, Toots from Thailand, my friend from Thailand, and um, we stopped at the campsite up in Treen. Um, I'm just going to have um, a pasty from that shop earlier on. Uh, I think this is the steak one. The last one was really nice. So it is so hot now, but it is literally, ah, oh, I can see the pyramid I was, I was going to walk to. Um, it's a bit further down the coast path that goes down to the beach. Oh well, well I could go down that path. Uh, probably got a picture of it somewhere anyway. It's not that impressive. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I've got my summer <laughs> sun uh, burn gear on. Stop getting sunburned, especially my nose. I always get a bright red. I don't, I don't, I don't put suntan lotion on because I don't believe that stuff's good for you. I think it probably, I think it can be pretty bad for you. So um, I don't like the stuff either. So I'd rather cover up than uh, put suntan lotion on. I'd rather look like a twat like this than have a bright red sunburnt nose end up getting nose cancer and losing my nose so i could take this off but once you obviously take your nose off you can't really get it back can you so yeah so i'd rather wear this than get skin cancer on my nose because uh, it is really hot i mean like it's like a summer's day and i'm going to be walking in it all day so my nose will be very burnt if i don't put this on so yeah it's okay to look like a twat sometimes it's, it's funny the looks you get wearing this in um, the UK. People, I, people are really clueless to skin cancer in this country. Like, they look at you and they wonder why you're wearing it. Well, I don't want to mate, do I? <laughs> people are really clueless to it. I can't believe it. Seriously, like, since I, I mean, I probably was as well because I spent years and years without wearing skin protection in hot countries. And since my scare, I realised, like, yeah, it's so easy to get. I've seen, you know, because you do your research and um, you don't want to lose your bloody nose all your life. So, yeah, I'd rather, rather wear this. Because if I'm just going out down to that town, I'm not going to wear this because I'm not going to be out for long. But I'm out all day and I'm hiking. So it all tops, it, tops up your UV radiation, doesn't it? So um, I don't care. I'd rather look like this, like I said, than um, end up with that. So this is one of the many Iron Age uh, hillfort uh, castles along the coastline. I can actually see the ramparts on this one. Some of them it's a little bit hard to see the ramparts. Some of them are like obviously half gone the seas took half of them away or more but yeah i can definitely see the ramparts in this one so there's a few uh horses grazing in here i don't know if the, the horses or ponies but yeah you should be able to see some ramparts now coming up um yeah they're pretty they're pretty good condition actually for being right by the sea and they're probably a realistic condition they maybe not been maintained like a lot of them have, you know, like we dug or whatever. Yeah, pretty good condition. Oh, that's quite big. It goes way back here. Looks like there's some good camping spots along the coast along this bit. But uh, it's still very early, and I've got a 
get right the way. I've got to camp by the spot I camped by the first night tonight because I've got to get in the bus in the morning. So I need to be as close as possible to um, Penzance uh, bus station. And it means I've got to probably, I've got to leave the camping spot at five in the morning. <laughs> For, uh, yeah, at least five in the morning, I think. Uh, there's no way I can camp around here, it's way too far away. It's really nice out here as well. And now the weather and the weather will be nice again tomorrow. I won't experience that because I'll be on the bus all day. <laughs> but um, it's been really good, I've really enjoyed it. The whole uh, the week's been great. All kinds of weather. Well, coming down into another cove, I don't know what this place is called. I can't remember. <laughs> when you when you're carrying such a big bag, heavy bag, all your energy goes on to carrying that bag and walking. Uh, <laughs> you can't really think about the places you've been to. You can't. To be honest, I can't even remember where I camped last night at the moment. That that much energy has gone into carrying this bag. I just can't. I just can't remember to be honest. Tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if I've camped in this spot before. Looks like somewhere I've probably camped. This is just out of that little uh, cove I've just been in, just up from there. It's a little path off the main path, ideal for camping. And I can't see any houses, cannot see this spot, so this would definitely be an ideal camping spot in good weather. It's a bit exposed though, so you wouldn't want to camp here in bad weather. Well, now we're getting away from that cove, quite far from that cove. This, I, I'm guessing, this part of the coast path is much more quiet and remote, not so walked. Um, it's not obviously the most remote part of the southwest coast path. That's in Devon. Um, but this is probably remote. This is remote for Cornwall, I think. This bit. It's definitely quieter than the other bits. That sounds so tempting, but there's absolutely no way of me knowing if that shop is open. Unless I can get some internet, maybe I can tell then. So that shop's up this path, but it's like October the 22nd. Will the campsite even be open? I doubt it. So folks, on the off chance that this campsite is open in its shop, which is the 22nd of October, I, I just can't see it being open. Um, on the off chance it is open, um, I'm going to get something from there. Anyway, it's only a little bit further on when I was originally planning to come off the path and there's no chance of any shops along that bit. So I'm going to come off here, I'm going to see the Merry Maid in Stone Circle and Piper Stones, which I've, I've seen this all before, I've got pictures but no video. So that's why I'm going up there and I've seen them for a long time. And um, I actually camped there once I got told off. Uh, camped at the Mer uh, Merry Maiden Stone Circle. But um, yeah, 
I won't be camping there this time because there's some houses nearby anyway. But um, yeah, so hopefully this is open. I'm, I'm going to obviously you will know in a bit. Oh, there's some rather nice uh, memorial chairs. Not seeing any shop. No sign of a campsite. Ah, I think I can now. Ah, I see some kind of campsite. Well, that's the campsite, uh, but it was closed, the shop, but there were some water taps, but no one was about and I needed some water, so. But um, yeah, it looks like a nice campsite. Supposed to be the most well known stone circle in Cornwall, but it's not my favourite, I have to say. I think the one that's got a standing stone in the middle, whatever that's called, is, is my favourite. That's not far from here actually, but I won't be visiting it on this trip unfortunately. I, thought I, might, I do have a picture of it, I might put it up on the video. On, on the OS map, clearly there is a right way down here, but these. <laughs> these landowners have obviously altered that or they put up some so there's no right away either way what do you think of them just walk fucking all the way down here to find it's not public right away <laughs> I've got some choice words for them but channel polite these days so <laughs> it doesn't ray open does it Surprised actually. Thought it'd be open. Don't think any of the shops are open, unfortunately. Looks like Al's got a shop down there. Oh well. I remember this place now. I've got a feeling this is the halfway point on the. Um, Entire southwest coast path. Okay, the shop's looking very closed. It's out of season. It's kind of the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, just having a look around here. Just about five miles away. I'm probably think somewhere else, but I do, I do remember it. I'm just looking around here to see if I can see stone about it. No. Now this is what I was looking forward to. A nice peaceful Cornish cove. No tourists, which there isn't, but it looks like there's some people coming down now. Um, it's the holidays as I've regretfully found out. 
but of course I'm a tourist as well but you know what I mean you like to do these sort of things you want some uh, like visit a nice peaceful area um, so yeah it's a shame I didn't get here earlier because I could have got a bloody nice soft drink or something for a pasty I got food and I filled up with water from that campsite there was some, a water tap so luckily I've got enough to drink I don't know what these people are doing okay starting to get those uh, autumn colours now along here on the uh, ferns right I've decided I'm going to put my tent up in the first really cool camping spot area it's farther away from the house uh, Penzance than I'd like but I'm just going to get up a lot earlier I'm going to get up at 3 in the morning and start making a move at 4 give me 4 hours to get into Penzance that's well enough time to get there get up at 3 get the tent down by 4 in the morning hopefully there's somewhere along here to camp I know there is at some point but I want to camp somewhere I've not camped before on this trip because close to Mouse Hole I camped when I got here didn't I on that bench I don't really want to do that but if I have to I have to been along here a few times can't remember all of it though but I remember bits and pieces when I see it I remember it being rocky like this okay that's ah, not too bad now well I actually saw a really good place to camp but unfortunately that little cave I went to the houses were right in view of it so I couldn't really camp there it was a perfect spot I do remember down this bit here that I've walked up here before when I've had to catch a bus early in the morning from Penzance early-ish or whatever or train and um, there is a little bit of grass verge here but it's uneven from what I remember it might even be washed away the bit I've seen now might be totally different it doesn't look very even unfortunately the sea's really calm the weather's supposed to be okay so if there is some grass patch along here I'm going to put my tent up along here but I do remember I end up camping in the trees because uh the, partly because of the weather it was very windy and uh it's uneven, uneven along here it looks like it probably I really don't want to put my tent up in the bloody trees though I want to have a view I just did some droning noiling, noiling. the sun's just gone behind the rocks now and um, there were some boats so I can't really send the drone out now yeah this this uh, this trip seems to be a bit of a disaster when it comes to droning um, I've got one or two good clips but um, so it was because of the wind, because of the no drone flying zone, because it's been so busy as well. And also I've not had the chance. I've only had one place where I could charge my batteries up. So I've only charged all my batteries up once in the whole week. So, so it's a good job I did take a load of batteries with me. Um, they've actually come in useful, but uh, yeah, the drone needs charging up quite often. Obviously it sucks up a lot of power. I've got three, I always take three drone batteries with me. Each one probably realistically gives me 20 minutes flight time uh, maximum. Uh, so that's an hour in the sky. But um, yeah, you, it takes sometimes a while to get the right shot. And like I said, because it's so busy, you're in such a rush before someone comes along. And uh, at the moment, yeah, I, I, I just had the perfect light, but fuck come along and I can't you're not supposed to fly it near boats so yeah so yeah someone just some walkers just walked past I said you've got a nice spot there and I couldn't agree more sure I've camped here before or tried to 
But yeah, it's getting close to being washed away this bit. But the sea is calm tonight. <laughs> I can, I've camped before the uh, crack of earth that's falling away. So hopefully I'll be all right in the night. Don't get crushed in the landslide. Can't see any, um, I have seen some uh, seals today, but there's none here at the moment. So folks, this is uh, today's office. Got my laptop set up as my office table. There's my accommodation for tonight. And this is my view. Can't get much better, can you? I've got, I've got a perfect seat here watching the uh, fishing boats go back into Newlin. Newlin's after Malsole on the way to Penzance from here. Um, I've just had a, a protein drink, uh, which I do have if I can't get hold of any milk. I don't have this every day, but if I can't get hold of any milk, I'll have this instead, which I just had. Luckily, I've just got one more scoop left. I can have that one tomorrow morning before I get on the bus. And I'm just boiling some water. Yeah, it's still going. Um, boiling some water for some green tea, which is another good thing to have uh, after you've done some um, exercise. And um, got some PLR rice and korma vegetable uh, um, spicy curry. Um, I'm going to have that and for the morning because I don't know if I'll be filming in the morning because it'll be dark but anyway I'm going to have this Heinz Creations lentil curry and a uh, Flying Start coffee bag number five by uh, Taylor's very good not my favourite though I have to say but they're nice very strong I put my tea bags in a uh, tin foil to keep them, keep them fresh, and I've got a uh, brown organic uh, cane cane sugar. Um, yeah, just waiting for that water to boil. Also, after exercise, it's good to have um, some peanut butter or peanuts because it's got some. I can't remember what it is. It's a vitamin or mineral in it that helps absorb calcium into your bones and peanut butter or pe peanuts is one of the only things you can find this mineral there's not many places can, other places can find it and um, without it the calcium doesn't absorb into your bones properly and it can um, without it it can also um, too much calcium it can deform your bones so you need this mineral to keep your bones healthy and it's also got lots of protein in as well. Well, I won't be, I won't be eating these again. Um, that curry was just way too mild for me. I like spicy curries that just had no, nothing to it at all. It was like eating cardboard. It's fucking I ate most of it. You know, I have to eat something, so couldn't eat all of it though. It's fucking. Good. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have a green tea now. <laughs> time of editing this video I have 994 subscribers so nearly a thousand so please show your support folks and if you like subscribe it help me out loads